Um, today we're gonna talk about using uh, Microsoft Excel to solve uh, algebraic equations. Uh, but before we go ahead and see how uh, can we do this using Excel, um, we'll just uh, pass quickly by the ways we can solve them uh, the algebraic equations, and then see how we can use Excel to do this. So uh, first, uh, uh, what are what is an algebraic equation? So it it can be anything that can be a polynomial has x or whatever one two three four whatever it can have uh, log or len or exponential or any trigonometric uh, trigonometric functions sin uh, sin cosine uh, sine cosine whatever and uh, it doesn't matter if we have combinations of these things like polynomial and log and exponential it doesn't matter but the main thing that you don't have any uh, d by dx or d by dt term so it's not uh, an, uh, a differential equation so anything other than differential equation can be solved with uh, uh, Microsoft Excel or we can solve it using the technique that we are gonna talk about today so um, there is a very famous algebraic equation that's pretty simple to solve which is the second order polynomial algebraic equation which is uh, this form a x squared plus b x plus c and usually the way we solve this equation is by uh, let's say we have this equation you uh, simplify it into two uh, brackets and then solve each bracket separately and get the solution uh, by doing this and if the the equation is difficult and you cannot separate this uh, form into two brackets you can use the formula which is negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a and in this case you can get the solution uh, pretty simple and pretty directly without doing any uh, more calculations <clears throat> however um, not all the algebraic equations are that simple so uh, if you see the equation that we deal with during our uh, engineering uh, study then you will find that uh, the equations can have higher order uh, polynomial equations or you can have um, uh, exponential and uh, and polynomial like this equation you can have sine or cosine or different things so uh, there is no formula that you can use to solve all these equations so the way you can solve them is by doing trial and error or by iterative solution which means that you assume a value of the variable which is x and then you check if this uh, satisfies the equation if you substitute in this equation and if it's if, if it satisfies the equation which means that it makes the right hand side equal to the left hand side then this assumption is right if not which is the most probable thing that will happen because you'll not get the right assumption from the beginning you will go ahead and reassume a value of the variable and redo the calculations and you do this many times till you reach um, uh, the right solution that satisfies the equation so it's a very long process and it takes a uh, long time if you do this manually uh, without using any uh, software or any calculation method that will help you doing this uh, so uh, before we go ahead and see how Excel does this uh, we need to see some real examples of the equations we use it in chemical engineering so one of them is the equation of state like the simple equation of van der Waals there are, there are more uh, complex equations but this equation uh, is a polynomial of third order and we will solve this equation in, uh, in a while uh, another form another equation is the Bernoulli equation which is in the fifth order polynomial equation in of D which is the diameter and uh, if you have a CSTR uh, and you have a reaction of nth order that might be uh, an algebraic equation that needs to be solved with a trial and error solution so uh, how we do this in Microsoft Excel we use two uh, options in Excel which one is one of them is called goal seek and one of them is called solver and we'll, so we'll see right now how to use these two um, tools in Excel to solve one of the equations which is the van der Waals equation right now so let's go and see what we are gonna do so here is the equation of van der Waals I did some simplification I uh, multiplied the two brackets and then put all the coefficients together so this is the final form that we are gonna solve uh, using this equation so um, before we go ahead uh, this is just an equation of state so you have uh, a relation between pressure volume and temperature 
and uh, um, you have two variables which which are a and b which are specific variables for every component so each uh, compound or element in the uh, we can have has their a and b which people did a lot of uh, experiments till they got the a and b for all the components so um, we will solve uh, the equation today for benzene so we have a and b for benzene we have the pressure we have the temperature and the r is uh, 0.282 to match the units of the pressure and the temperature so uh, if you're gonna solve this equation for pressure or temperature it will be pretty simple straightforward it will be just first order in temperature and pressure but if you're gonna solve this equation for volume then you'll find that it has v power 3 v power 2 v power 1 and v power 0 which is no v or the constant so uh, in this case this uh, problem needs to be solved by the iterative solution so let's first go ahead and assume a value of v oops of v as we uh, said right now and let's say i'll assume it as one whatever value that you like and then you will solve the equation using the, uh, the value you assumed of the volume so what we are going to do is uh, multiply pressure by uh, this volume to the power of 3 and minus open bracket the pressure multiplied by B and plus R multiplied by T minus a multiplied by v so this, this is the longest step in the in the solving process so you just need to write the equation and then everything else will be pretty simple so first you wrote the assumed value of v and then you calculated the equation or the left hand side of the equation based on the assumed value of v and if it if the assumed value is right then you will have to uh, have this equation equals to the right hand side which is zero so since it's not zero then, then the assumed value is not right and that's what we uh, expect so uh, let's say I'll put this as two so it's uh, it's not the right answer let's put it as 0.5 or whatever then it's not the right answer so you can go ahead and do this changing the value of v manually but this is gonna take a long time it, of course it will be easier because you just put the value and it it's calculated automatically but this is not what we want to do the first thing we need to do is to use the uh, goal seek option so if you go here in data and here in what if analysis then you will find this is goal seek thing so goal seek it says that you have a set cell which is the cell that you want to uh, uh, have a value of zero which is what you're gonna do so this is the target cell the cell that you uh, want to uh, reach the value to zero by changing one cell which is the volume but before we go ahead and do and press ok uh, just note that you have one set cell that you can you need to uh, target and uh, you have only one cell you can change uh, the other option or the other uh, tool in excel has more options but this is the the simple tool is to use one cell to uh, adjust another cell so if you press ok uh, it will do a lot of changes looks like we did something wrong in the calculation so let's recalculate the equation it's p multiplied by v power 3 minus p multiplied by v plus r multiplied by t minus a multiplied by oh i forgot to multiply by v squared so this is one thing I did wrong and it's it's good that we that I made this problem because we we always find these problems that arise every time so let's go ahead and do the goal seek once again so I want this to be equal to zero oops to zero by changing this okay here we go so now the solution is 0 0.19322 whatever and the equation now is almost zero it's in negative 1.05 times 10 to the minus 5 so you have 0 0.0000 something um, so it's almost now done and you you don't need to do any more uh, calculations so this is the first tool that you can use the other, the other tool is called solver and um, sometimes you cannot find this solver in the 
in this to in this uh, ribbon if you uh, haven't used it before so if you want to find this uh, solver thing you go in the uh, uh, office button and then go to excel options and then go to add ends and go to go and then you'll find these things if you don't have the solver then you just need to check this and press ok and then you will find it here so uh, if i open this solver thing then you will find that you have uh i'll say what's the target cell so the target cell before this i'll change this back to one and then go to solver so i'll repeat the same process but just using solver instead of gold seek so i have this i want to set this to zero by changing cell which is this but ju just make sure or um, note that you have here cells not only one cell so you here uh, can only set one target cell but you can change more than one cell to do this so the solver gives us more space to do iterative, iterative solution uh, by changing more than one cell not only one cell like the goal seek does so uh, now it's done another thing here is there are some constraints you can add and we will see later how we can use these constraints in solving uh, simultaneous equations then i'll press solve and now we have almost the same solution it's 0.193 something and the equation is now uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 7 which is even smaller than the goal seek uh, solution so uh, solver gives kind of more accurate solution and it's more powerful but goal seek still is a good tool to use if you just need to get the solution pretty simply so these are the two tools that we can use to solve uh, the equations uh, uh, by using the iterative solution in Microsoft Excel thanks